So in today's video, I want to help you get started with your brand new Boss RC5 looper pedal. I'm going to break down all of the different types of settings and the different menus available on this loop station so you can get an introduction into the different ways you can utilize the power of this single track loop station. Now, if at any point you want to learn more about any of the settings I touch on in this video, check out the link in the video description down below for my ultimate guide, which is a full course taking you through all of the different settings on the Boss RC5 looper pedal. Now recording a loop on the Boss RC5 is a very simple and intuitive experience. Everything is controlled by the single foot switch on the Stompbox looper pedal. Now you can connect an external foot switch to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to stopping and starting loops and clearing out your loop track. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to use the Boss RC5 as a standalone pedal. Now to record your loop, you simply just press the foot switch once to initiate the recording process. And then once you're happy with the phrase you've recorded, you press it again and it will initiate playback. So I'll demonstrate that now for you. So you can see we have now recorded our bass loop layer. I click the record foot switch once and then I clicked it again to initiate playback. So from this point, we can begin overdubbing onto our RC5. Now a really cool feature about the Boss RC5, because of the brand new 32-bit sound engine, we have unlimited uncompressed overdubs. So this means you can go absolutely crazy with the amount of loop layers that you add to your single loop track and you will not lose any audio clarity or quality whatsoever. So I'm now going to record a little bit of a chord progression to add a little bit of groove to this little riff that we've got going. So now I've overdubbed my next layer onto my loop track just simply by clicking the record play foot switch once again. And signified by the brand new LCD loop light indicators, the screen turned yellow to show that we were overdubbing. Previously it was red when we were recording the bass layer. So from this point I could add more loop layers or I could solo over the top of this, practice some guitar scales, or I could actually remove this overdub simply by pressing and holding for a couple of seconds and you can see it removes that second overdub that we did. So this allows us to add a little bit more dynamic to our performance, but I'll bring it back in and I'll start building up the performance from this point. So let's take a look at some of the settings on the Boss RC5. Now for the very first time in Boss Loop Station history, we have a fully fledged menu system on their single track stomp box style loop stations. And this is thanks to the brand new LCD display. Now this display tells you everything that the looper pedal is doing. It tells you what memory patch you have loaded in. Right now we're on memory patch 20. We can go to 21. We can click and hold and move this uh, memory slash value knob encoder to go up in tens if you need to skip through a little bit faster than in singles. And it also allows you to access all of the different menus and settings. So right here, we have the setup menu, which is the system settings on the Boss RC5. And then we also have the memory settings. So if we click memory, this will access all of the different parameters we can adjust within this specific preset we have loaded in. So we can change the loop modes, the rhythm settings, the name of the patch, and so on. And we can exit out by clicking the button once again. Now it's important to understand the distinction between system settings, also known as setup, and the memory bank settings. Now system settings, which are found inside of the setup button, those are global parameters that will be applied to every single preset patch you load in on the Boss RC5. So despite whether you are on memory patch 21 or memory patch 20, you will have the exact same setup on the RC5 because it's a global parameter. However, if you tweak settings inside of the memory settings, those are preset specific. So inside of the memory settings menu, you can customize the loop mode, reverse mode, one shot, the loop level, the record action, how the looper pedal responds to the commands you give it. Then you could save that by just clicking these two buttons simultaneously and going through the writing process. And then you could head on over to another preset patch like 25, and you could tweak all of those settings once again for the specific song you want to perform on this preset patch, which is really cool because it gives you a lot of flexibility to create predetermined setups for the specific song you want to perform with your Boss RC5 and depending on how you want to configure that. Now, probably one of my favorite features of the new generation of Boss Looper pedals is the LCD display loop light indicator. So when we begin looping, you can see we can click record and it will initiate the recording process signified by this red bar. And then we can click playback and it will begin playing back our loop and then we can overdub and it will turn yellow to signify we're overdubbing and then it will go back to green once we've finished that process. And then we'll double tap twice 
to stop that loop. Now, the really cool thing we can do is we can actually customize what's being displayed on this LCD loop light indicator. And this is one of my favorite features on both the RC5 and RC500, because depending on what level of looper you are, you can change what type of information is being presented to you that will assist in your live looping performance. So if we head into the setup menu, which is the system settings, so we'll click setup, and we scroll on over to general. Now, we can scroll over to this mode right here, which is the display mode. Now this is going to allow us to change what is being displayed on our LCD display as our loop light indicator. Now currently I have it set to position. So as you saw, when I played the loop, it shows a status of the progress of that loop and how long it's taking to actually complete its cycle. Well, the cool thing we can do is we can actually change what's being displayed. We could change it to st status, this position, position plus status, the number of the preset patch, a variety of different things that I highly recommend exploring. Now, my favorite mode is actually status. And what will happen this time is it will tell you what the looper pedal's doing. So for example, it says it's playing, it's now saying it's overdubbing, and then even if we uh, restarted our loop and we recorded, you will see it says record. And I think this is fantastic if you're a beginner because it tells you clearly what your loop station is doing. And also, even if you're really advanced, I find it really useful because it's just really cool looking with that bold text on the screen. So now let's move on to some of my favorite memory settings. So as I said, memory settings are preset specific. So whatever we set up inside of this menu, we can tweak again on another preset patch for a completely different configuration. Now inside of the memory settings, you can access the rhythm settings so you can change the uh, drum pattern that you have booted in, of which we have 57 that we can choose from, a variety of different variations as well, A or B. And then we also have the ability to select the drum kit that's performing that pattern and the time signature and how the rhythm settings actually start depending on when we're recording or not on the looper pedal. All of these settings I break down in depth, linked in the video description down below in my ultimate guide for the Boss RC5 if you want to learn about anything I discuss further in this video. So let's explore one of my favorite memory settings, which is inside of the loop subcategory. So we're gonna scroll over to the parameter, which is record action. Now by default, your Boss RC5 will be set to record play as the record action. And what this means is when you begin recording a loop, it will record. And then when you click playback, it will instantly begin playing back that loop, as you can see by the status on the loop station. However, if we clear this out and we change the record action to something different, go into the memory settings, go to loop, scroll on over to record action, we can actually change this to be record dub. And what's going to happen this time is it will record. And then when we initiate playback of that loop, it will instantly start overdubbing as opposed to just simply playing. So it will play the pre-existing loop we recorded, and then we can overdub an additional layer on top of this. And because of the power of the RC5 having 32-bit processing, this means we can do unlimited uncompressed overdub and have supreme clarity during our performance. And I'll demonstrate how this works differently to the record action we just explored. So we're set to record dub. Let's exit out and I'll begin recording. And then I'll initiate playback and this time it will instantly start overdubbing. And as you can see, it says it is currently in dub mode. So that was a brilliant example of how you can utilize the memory settings to customize how your Boss RC5 actually operates. Now I want to move on and show you how you can adjust the loop level of your loop that's actually playing back. Now I noticed online a lot of people were confused in how to go about turning down their loop station and turning up their looper pedal if it was a little bit too quiet. Now the way we access the loop level is really clever. So right here, we have the memory slash value knob encoder. And so far, we've been using this dial to scroll through all of our settings within the menus, change memory banks, and so on. However, if we click this once, it will access the loop level parameter. And we can now turn this dial to turn down the playback level of the loop we've recorded or turn it up if it's a little bit too quiet in your performance. So that's how you access the loop level. Now the final settings that I want to share with you and take a look at is the rhythm settings. Now obviously we briefly took a look at the rhythm settings inside of the memory bank settings, but I wanna share with you another shortcut so you can access them a little bit easier and a little bit faster. So if we take a look at the Boss RC5, so far to access the rhythm settings, you will head into the memory settings, scroll on over to rhythm, select it within that menu, and then within here you can adjust all of the individual parameters for the Boss RC5. However, if we click and hold the on and off button over here for a couple of seconds, 
it will trigger a shortcut that will instantly take you to your rhythm settings. And you can see I've got the rhythm level, the reverb amount, the pattern, all the things we previously had within the memory settings. And another cool feature about the rhythm settings is actually the tap tempo ability over here. So you can see I can click this tempo button and I can specifically specify a tempo with the memory slash value knob encoder. You can see we've selected 130 BPM or alternatively, I can tap in the specific tempo of whatever I'm feeling and then my Boss RC5 will respond perfectly to that during the recording process at that manual tempo that I just set within the rhythm settings parameters. Now, obviously there's so many settings that you can tweak on the Boss RC5, it will make this video extremely long. So if you want to learn about all of those in detail with specific video tutorials, check out the link in the video description down below for my Boss RC5 Ultimate Guide. But as always, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for future Boss RC5 content, and I will see you in the next video.